Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destiny Choice and you watching Choice TV. So in today's video, I really want to get on here and talk about the show Baddies. And the fact that the show is probably going to get cut off very soon because lately there's been some awkward tension between the CEO of Zeus Network, Lamel Plummer, and Natalie Nunn, the leading lady of the platform. And I saw their live recently and there's a lot of things that I peeped that a lot of people have been ignoring. They, they, they can get invited to this party because it's going to be really exclusive. And you, but, you, got, um, you know, you got your music going, you got the baddie blunts. You know, you got the fashion over deals and all sorts of things. So you're killing it, man. I'm proud of you. Hey, I'm broke. Cut me the check, let me. <laughs> and then you're, you know, you're killing it at Zeus. Killing it at Zeus. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna check out. Now, as you guys know, Baddies has obviously taken over the world. It's one of the most streamed web series on the internet right now. And a lot of people all over the world are talking about it, from the fighting, the drink throwing, the chaos, the violence, the flip flopping. But it's a guilty pleasure for a lot of us who have free time. It's just pure escapism. And it's not even just Baddies that's honestly taken over. It's a lot of other reality shows on the Zeus network. And a lot of other reality TV stars have honestly left Bravo. They've left VH1 and they're coming over to Zeus. Like Nini Leaks recently announced that she's going to be hosting the reunion for Baddies. You know, they had Orlando Brown. They had the dude Prince from Love and Hip Hop Miami on Zeus Network. And honestly, the streaming platform is definitely skyrocketing and climbing up. However, eventually this whole reality TV shit will go through its demise and its downfall. And eventually we won't see a lot of this shit anymore. And I'll tell you why. But Zeus Network has pretty much been taking over the industry because as you guys know, Zeus Network pays pretty well. They're paying people on average at least five figures or more in order to do these kind of ratchet reality TV shows. And that's pretty much what Zeus Network has been known for. Zeus Network obviously got their start because as we all know, Lamel Plummer started the platform around the summer of 2018. And he started it with a lot of his investors like Amanda Cerny, King Batch, and Deep Storm Power who initially invested into the platform. Well, initially, the platform used to produce documentaries, they used to produce random snippets, random shows, random clips, random content, random skits for a lot of influencers. And then eventually they got into the reality television bag by signing on people like Blame It On Quay, B. Simone, Black China, and Tokyo Tony, which is a big reason why the network even got a big boost in ratings because of these cringeworthy reality TV shows. Nobody took care of your ass but me. I'm ready to get the fuck. Now, Lamel Plummer is a 37-year-old Detroit, Michigan native who started the platform because he basically came up from wealth and privilege for a lot of his life. His parents are in the TV production industry. As time went on, he eventually became really successful on BET because if you guys didn't know, he produced so many shows like The West Brooks, he produced The Monique Talk Show, and he also produced Preachers of LA, which, is a, which was a very popular show around 2015, 2016. I grew up in television. My parents uh started and created uh television networks back in the 80s and they were nice. one of the first ones to do that they created a few linear religious networks and uh i grew up around all of that i was very blessed to to, to be able to gain so much insight and information and i was uh one of the first um and the youngest uh, african-american full service production companies where we uh created and uh sold and executive produced shows for uh, major networks like BET or mm -hmm. Oxygen, etc. Roof, Raggy? So how the fuck he go from doing all that, doing all those things with BET and Oxygen, to now going down this route, where all we see is chaos, toxicity, violence, and all this wild shit that the network is now taking off for well, best believe that he's trying to rebrand because Lamel Plummer low-key knows that a lot of what he's known for is kind of a pathetic, sad joke. Not to mention all the rumors of him allegedly sleeping with his cast members. I remember when I had, on my birthday, on my birthday weekend, when I had went to that hotel, I think it was like the one, but he was out having dinner with this bitch. And I asked him, who the fuck is, who is that? And then he was saying that was his bitch. So I never knew like she was going to be on the show or nothing. I thought she was just another girl, the um, Anna girl. The female rapper Stunna Girl also blasted Natalie Nunn's so-called best friend for also sleeping with the CEO of Zeus, and there's been a lot of receipts to also prove that she might be actually sleeping with this man. Because private text messages were leaked of one of the cast members going back and forth with the female rapper Stunna Girl, claiming that she's been messing around with the CEO of Zeus, and she never got chlamydia from him, but apparently the CEO of Zeus has been going around giving chlamydia to other women, according to one of the cast members, Stunna Girl. So I don't respect you bitches. You bitches is leaving with motherfucking STDs and no money. No money, no money. 
You bitches is leaving with not the bag. No money on none. No money on at all. How are you fucking a nigga with a business, bitch, and you don't own none of the business? And not to mention, the CEO and producer of Zeus has a whole wife. Lemmy has a whole wife, and there's rumors of him giving chlamydia to women, sleeping around with women. And on top of that, there's even been a lot of evidence to prove that he may be sleeping with one of the main cast members, Scotty, because a lot- Yeah, okay, this is messy, and this is why a lot of people do not respect him or his platform, because this is all messy. It's all so messy, but of course, Zeus Network inevitably is going in a different direction, because all this press is not good for business. So, Lamel Plummer has definitely earned his stripes, and he's definitely done his due diligence. However, as we all know, Natalie Nunn pretty much bought her idea of baddies to Zeus Network. And as we all know, Natalie Nunn, the chin, has pretty much been successful probably for about a good 15 years. She's been a ratchet reality TV star, fighting, colorism, bullshit, throwing drinks on people, making a fool of herself. And she's bought a lot of us really great television throughout the years. And honestly, Natalie Nunn has always been known for being messy. She's been known for name dropping, talking about celebrities she's fucked, celebrities who she's given head to, all types of crazy shit. And Natalie has always been an escort and a hooker. That's never been a secret. And that's something that's always been mentioned throughout the years she's been famous. As an escort. Yes, Natalie Nunn is an escort. I know most of you guys knew it, but nobody's really came out and said it. So... Sarah said it. But of course, as a means to support her lifestyle, Natalie Nunn not only does reality TV show, but Natalie Nunn was also escorting. She was on private jets, messing around with these Nigerian rich men, rich, messing around with these rich Middle Eastern men, doing her big one in order to support herself. The pandemic eventually came about, and as we all know, a lot of people were at home pretty much consuming content. Blueface came up with this creative idea to film girls who he's always around doing crazy things, and he created his show Blue GC, and it was pretty popular. Natalie saw that, didn't like it, and she eventually got other girls who were on the BGC franchise to come together with her and to help build the baddie brand. And of course, that's pretty much the birth of baddies. During the pandemic, it was a great idea because of what they saw Blueface was doing and how he was capitalizing off of a niche they initially started. And they decide to pretty much capitalize and bring it to Zeus. Natalie, of course, famously bought a whole bunch of girls from BGC, acting to invest into the brand. And of course, she eventually swiped it from all of them. It went from all of us. I didn't know. I really like didn't know. I was retarded. <laughs> I, swear to God. I was like I mean, blindsided. When during filming, when Zeus showed up, I pretty much knew that if they liked what they saw, they were going to try to take that project and put it on their platform. I didn't anticipate that we would all be X'd out of our efforts. Right. So that's what I'm were. saying. Like, don't you feel like I'm over here? I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, so we all started this project, right? and we were basically all like fuck y'all and then like somebody only like one person's eating off off the whole thing well yeah I one mean and a half and she took it to the top took it to zeus and zeus network has pretty much been taking very good care of her and the show is insanely successful and now almost every fucking female rapper big name celebrity big name reality tv show big name reality tv star wants to be on zeus network and a lot of these women want to be on baddies a lot of girls, instead of going to college, want to go on baddies. A lot of the girls, instead of taking care of their family and trying to find a hustle or build their own brand, want to go on baddies because it is a great platform to promote yourself because it's done a lot for so many women who've gone on the show. However, I don't think baddies is going to last that long. I said this a couple years ago, and I'll say it now. Baddies probably is only going to have one or two more seasons, and then the show is going to be done. And let me tell you why. So if you guys didn't know, we found out some very interesting news that Lamel Plummer announced during the summer when he was on DJ Academics channel doing an interview. He made it abundantly clear that he is trying to diversify the brand and he's trying to move further away from the reality TV fiasco bullshit. And honestly, that right there is the beginning of the end. On November, a week before Thanksgiving, Lamel Plummer decided to make an announcement on his Instagram and he made it very clear that now he's going to be creating scripted series. Scripted series, even though all the other shit on the platform is scripted. Scripted series in terms of the shit Netflix produces, the stuff Stars produces, the stuff that Hulu produces. And now they're going to be putting out original content as far as movies, television shows, Zeus original TV shows. And you guys know what that means. Whatever, but you're also hoping to diversify because I think that's what people want. It was not a hope. We are. Okay. We are. We're 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 working on that now. Scripted, unscripted. We're working on green lighting new shows. We want to have more shows. We don't want to just have, 
you know, we want to film it. Like, yeah, what, we, what, we what have, you guys have in the pipelines? We have all sorts of shows in the pipeline. We have dating shows. We have fashion shows. We have, you know, um, talk shows, podcasts. We have uh, so many different things that we want to get off the ground. Um, and so I just always want to make sure we do it right. We market it right. You know, like Netflix, it, what's the best way to say this? It's like sometimes you don't even know what they just put, new releases that they just put out. Like, yeah, we're going to diversify our shows. I don't want to put out a bootleg scripted series. When you see Zeus scripted, it's going to be like watching Power. It's going to be like watching something high quality premium like that, that you're like, oh, wow, damn, Zeus killed it with this, just like we did with our unscripted. So I'm not going to just rush into just putting out a scripted project just because we want to have scripted projects out. I'm not going to be like every other black streaming company that does that. You're going to know when Zeus has a scripted show because it's going to be a hit and it's going to be loud. It's going to be pro provocative. That means the whole reality TV shit is eventually going to dwindle and go far, far away. Now, we know at one point back in the early 2000s, reality TV was on the rise. There was a reality TV show for almost every single thing. But eventually, it's kind of an era that eventually dies out. I mean, how many times can you do the same thing over and over? How many times can you cast random girls with botched asses who are influencers on one TV show and then they constantly go to clubs, fight, go to clubs, fight, fight again, fight again, fight some more, go to one other club, go to a club. And they're obviously being paid to do these things. How many times do people want to watch these things? There are times where, I'm not going to lie, I will tune into baddies because it is a guilty pleasure when I'm bored and want to do some escapism. But there are times where I'll watch the show and I'll sometimes catch myself fast forwarding through all the fun. I don't care about the fact that y'all are jumping on the couch. I want to see y'all beating each other's asses and then eventually laughing at y'all because, of course, this whole baddies era is eventually going to dwindle away and die out. Even one of the investors, King Badge, former Vine star and actor who actually is still invested into the company from the beginning to now, even he's not happy with the way the platform is going. He was asked about it in an interview on the Behind the Likes podcast. And he couldn't even answer the question. I don't even have this written down. I really yeah. just asked this. Do you feel like you're proud of Zeus and what it's doing? Um, that's a that's a very difficult question to answer legally. Yeah. But I'll take it as a no. Is it lucrative? Is it a lucrative business move? I'm yeah, sure it's yeah, lucrative. Yeah, we're doing good. Eventually, Lamel Plummer is going to kick all these women to the curb, and mostly Natalie. And of course, Natalie doesn't even really own baddies anymore. She bought the idea to Zeus Network. They got the idea on lock. They gave her all types of money. She made six figures on top of six figures for all these episodes and seasons and all these events. And of course, Natalie eventually going to get tossed away, just like how she tossed the other girls away for basically a piece of that pie that she helped build. Now, Natalie stole the show from a lot of girls who helped build the platform, and evidently she kicked them off to the curve because she was trying to follow the money, and eventually, of course, the platform grew. But of course, as fast as people grow, as fast as they'll fall. Recently, Natalie and Lamel Plummer did a live stream together, where basically now they've announced that there will be a new season of the show, Baddies, and it'll be called Baddies Caribbean, where basically they're going to cast about 10 to 12 girls to travel all across the Caribbean islands during carnival season. And basically, a lot of these girls are going to get casted. And Lamel Plummer made it very clear that he was giving out $100,000 to several different girls who come up to the audition. Now, as we all know, the auditions are basically a scam. All these women from all over the world pull up, drive, fly in to do auditions. And then eventually, they don't get picked for the show. We've seen it time and time again where basically Natalie will throw these crazy auditions. They'll invest all this money into this big, 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 big arena just for all these girls to get kicked to the curb and get thrown off to the side and them only cast influencers who didn't even audition for the show to begin with. But he was making it clear that he was doing a giveaway, but Natalie didn't seem so keen to it. She didn't seem very happy about it. She even made a lot of slick backhanded compliments and even had like a lot of attitude when he was communicating with her how he wanted to go in a different direction with the platform, how he wanted to, you know, do more things and how he wanted to integrate more artists and more music. And you could just see Natalie's face the whole time disgusted. It's massive. Like, your franchise is like one of the first franchises where we're shooting a series internationally. So, you know, the girls got to act up, though, at the same time. They got to do their big one, but they got to act up because those, those laws and rules over there. But it's going to be fun. It's beautiful. You know, yeah, even when we were... Yeah. Now, listen to what he just said. The CEO just said, oh, yeah, y'all got to do y'all big one because this is the first time we're going overseas. But, you know, you know, there's still laws in those countries. But, yeah, 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 whatever. First of all, 
The Caribbean do not fucking play. Y'all from Antigua and Barbuda, Jamaica, Trinidad, St. Lucia, wherever y'all from, y'all countries do not play. And a lot of people in the Caribbean rep their country. So if they come in there fighting, fucking shit up, throwing shit everywhere, doing bullshit, fighting like they usually do at restaurants, trying to put on a front and making a fool of themselves and being drunk and acting irrational, making the country look bad, you better believe they will be kicked out in a fucking heartbeat. Because let me tell y'all something. I don't know how old some of y'all are, but back then there was a show called College Hill where basically they used to film all across us. They filmed in Atlanta. They filmed in so many other cities as well. And it was a huge show on BET. Now, it was a whole bunch of college kids in one house fighting, messing around, doing crazy stuff like what young people do. And they went to the Caribbean one year. They went to the Virgin Islands. And when I tell y'all, when they bought their fuck shit to the Caribbean, there was so much backlash. According to the publication HBCU Connect, many students explained what took place in previous seasons and that information prompted Hood Spef to incorporate what he called active learning to their feelings about the show. Then to make matters even worse, many college board members said the following stating, there needs to be some sort of balanced approach in their programming to include positives along with the negatives right now. They seem to be only interested in the bottom line. Register told the VI source, a local online newspaper for the Virgin Islands, Others on campuses also felt College Hill did not accurately represent the Virgin Island students. Then someone a part of the college board said this was done without having the decency within which to prepare. Because again, like I said, the Caribbean does not play. So if they bring their nonsense to the Caribbean, you better believe a lot of them will be deported in a heartbeat, even before the show even airs. I think it's going to be lit every time I go to the I'm telling you. Let me now the girls are obviously a train wreck. They just love to eat, fight, and go to clubs and drink alcohol. But Lemmy seems like he wants to go in a direction of going more positive, more of like a real housewives type of vibe where he wants to actually see them enjoy activities to make the island look good. And that's a good look for the island and a good look for tourism. Maybe that was the only way a lot of Caribbean countries are even going to approve them to even film if they make the island look good and they promote tourism. But unfortunately, Natalie doesn't really seem like she's keen on the idea. Look closely at her face and her reaction when Lemmy starts bringing activities up. Yeah, I think too we should. I know, I know. Creatively, we gotta. I want the girls to. I want to get into more activities. You know what I mean? I want them to experience the culture. I want to. I want this this series to be, you know, different from some of our other other uh, uh, seasons. You know, where there's a lot more activities. You know. Yeah. Um, that you guys are well, doing. Natalie Nine doesn't skydive. Sorry. No, if you gotta skydive. I'm and if not you don't doing that. Listen, <laughs> if you don't skydive, you, you, you that's for listen. you in Dubai. If you don't skydive, you might get kicked oh off the show. So it's up to you. <laughs> you catch me on the beach in Barbados or wherever we're going. <laughs> right, skydive to Barbados. <laughs> Listen, I'm not fucking skydiving or parasailing or going up in that goddamn air. You guys are fucking crazy. Let yeah, me I just jump know, but and you're... you have a big smile on your face. I say so. <laughs> All right, yeah, we get we veering off. We talking about skydiving. Because you want to so, um, do activities that our, our black ass I want, shouldn't I'll, be doing. <laughs> yeah, I want you guys to have fun this season, but I want it to be lit. I want it to be up. I want to I want to make sure we cast the right group of girls, the new ones, the returning cast. You know, some 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 influencers, and celebrities. Like, however, we need to mix it up. We got to make it. We got to make this season crazy. You know, we got to get some cool cameos with. Some some artists like I know we had a lot of music artists on the show last season and, and even past seasons, but you know the music is a big piece to this thing too. You know we're gonna be giving away a hundred grand to split between Ooh. twenty girls now. Cause some people hundred thousand dollars ain't shit. I I'll take a hundred thousand dollars right hey, man. now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be uh, giving away uh, five thousand dollars to twenty girls. That's so, so that's, cool. That's, I yeah, that. I think you know. These these girls come out. Some of these people are flying out. Then, of course, in this particular live stream, Lemmy went out of his way to address the fact that he's going in the more scripted route, like Netflix and Hulu. And as he subtly addressed it, you could see Natalie automatically took control. She got a little bit witty, and she started talking about her show. Well, and so we just, you know, we just, it, it, you know, it does take a little bit of time, even though it's unscripted, to make sure we give you guys good, high-quality premium content. But, yes, we're, gear, we're gear, gearing up to give you guys more content simultaneously while you're watching baddies you could also watch another show yep. different days you know this is a big year for us we're getting into scripted we're doing a lot of things and we're so um, gearing up to give you guys the reunion <laughs> oh yeah the reunion's about to go crazy 
And lastly, he tries to shift gears a little bit again and try to bring it back to, you know, opportunities in Zeus and things he's trying to expand. And then, of course, he sees that Natalie's bored. She seems irritated. She seems over it. And then Natalie, of course, negates and she immediately pivots everything back to her. And she talks about how she has a party that Zeus is going to pay for. And then Lemmy, out of nowhere, starts bringing up all the success and opportunities she's gotten because of him. And then automatically she makes a slick comment about her needing more money. Proud of you always. Um, you've been a great content partner and superstar. I see you got the magazine cover, you know, coming up. Yes, you, and speaking of that, we will be having a, 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 a cover magazine party, um, Grammy weekend, sponsored by Zeus, yeah. which we will have some of our big fans that are going to be out in L.A. for um, that weekend for Grammys. Um, we will be, like, having, like, I want to have a link through Zeus, where they, they they can get invited to this party because it's gonna be really exclusive. And you, but you, got, um, you know, you got your music going. You got the baddie blunts. You know, you got the fashion overdills and all sorts of things. So you're feeling it, man. I'm proud of you. Hey, I'm broke. Can you check, Lemmy? <laughs> so you're feeling it, man. I'm proud of you. Hey, I'm broke. Can you check, Lemmy? <laughs> and then you're you know you're killing it at Zeus. Killing it at Zeus. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna check her. Um, okay, listen. So, but you know, um, I definitely do. I I want to also say. To all the baddies that have, you know, were on Baddies East, uh, they killed this season. The season went up. Like, you know, like how people be like, oh, my oh, album went platinum. We, like, like triple we, platinum. We did like diamond. 10. We ten, Yeah, like diamond. <laughs> how many streams? Diamond, bitch. Diamond. <laughs> Where's my awards? What's no, like, listen, <laughs> we're we're charting and trending every week. You guys are killing it. Now they're I'll killing just, it. It's amazing. And I, and I love it. And so I definitely And I think, want... I think uh, the Caribbean's is only going to go go crazier. So um yeah, but yeah i'm excited but i do gotta run um, all right well we um fly safe i'm right behind you i'm catching the next one out um oh. now natalie wears her emotions on her face and you can evidently clear that she's not feeling the idea of him trying to integrate more musicians more artists more guest appearances and much more i mean one interesting thing that happened was fucking bobby schmurder literally made an appearance on baddies like that was hella random and weird and he said he wants to go the route of trying to get musicians on the show and he wants to rebrand. Now, as Natalie was making it very clear as he was trying to, you know, promote the things that he wants to do for Zeus on her live stream of over like 3,000 people, it was odd because I noticed that Natalie kept cutting him off and she kept saying, yeah, yeah, but anyways, so yeah, you know, Bad is doing so well, you know, it's such a great show, it has all these ratings, and then Lamel will cut her off and be on some like, Natalie, remember, you got all these deals, and you know, Natalie, you're doing so great, you know, thanks to me, you're doing so great, Natalie, thanks to me, you're doing so excellent, you're getting all these deals, Natalie. And you could just feel the tension between both of them. I mean, look at the way they're looking at each other. You know, the back end, the compliments, the slick jokes. And most people would look at these lives and automatically think, oh, they're just joking around. They're just playing around. You're looking too deep into it. But no, look deeper and use your discernment. I mean, let's be realistic for a second. This is business. It's always been business. And then the whole Zeus network is obviously messy as fuck. They have a bad reputation. Not to mention, every time the conversation of him promoting a horrible image to black people and promoting a horrible image in general comes up, he always just seems to deflect from it. But they might say to you, well, you know academics is A, B, and C. You greenlighting him to have a show means you must be okay with Why are him. you doing your show? Well, I'm, I'm doing me on my show. I'm doing no, but why are you doing it? Well, what, what, what's the purpose of you? Why are you doing this show? Well, it, whatever I would be doing, I'd be doing me. Right, right. you'll be doing you because you want to tell your story. You want to do things in a way that's unapologetically you. You want to, you want to, you want to give people a platform and an outlet to share their story. You want to ask the raw questions, the real questions. You want to get to the nitty gritty. You don't want to sugarcoat and fluff stuff. And that's why people find your track. Whether they hate you, they love you, they love whatever. No, what? all toward, if you take out Zeus, do you know how much stuff is on social media every day, every day? There's so much stuff that happens on well, social Zeus media. Well, is pretty much network TV. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. We're not network. No, no, no. We're not on, network TV. We're, we're, we're a subscription video on demand platform, right? Just like but you. But listen, network. just like you. What makes us different than HBO? What makes us different than? If, hold, if on, let, hold on, HBO, let me finish. Let me hold on, let me finish. What are you talking? HBO used to have real sex. And then there's other stuff. Look at the Blueface and Krishan situation. I remember when Krishan literally broke a fucking alcohol bottle over Blueface's head. And then she was out here picking up the glass and stuff. And they showed it on television. And Blueface was obviously spazzing out and having an issue. And they didn't get him help. But they just kept the cameras rolling. Then they had Krishan huffing and puffing a whole blunt and throwing stuff at people. 
and they think that that was appropriate to film and put on their streaming platform, a pregnant woman huffing and puffing a blunt until they felt like turning them off. You know, and then he deflected from it and acted like, oh, well, you know, I I mean, I didn't really know about that. And you probably can't speak about that particular issue because she said she saw y'all. Um, it's, it, uh, y'all don't have a pregnant woman smoking on camera and fighting. I, I, Do y'all? Honestly, I was not. I don't know. I I haven't seen. I, honestly, I'm not that involved in the, the post. I don't watch every clip, every moment, every little thing. So I can't I can't really speak on that. But but. Not, you've you've heard of it now. I, I've been honestly, I haven't heard you've of a lot. Never of things. seen it's on your network. I, I, <laughs> I, listen, I just got a call about some other stuff that was on my network that I didn't even know was on my. Network. But, but if that know. was on it, that would be a regrettable moment. At least. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they it hasn't been a it hasn't been anything that's been a thing for me. So you know, usually when it's like a thing, it it you know, I'll, I'll get a lot of calls or emails nah, or texts. We're talking about social. I'm media. not saying people weren't. T- they talk about they talk about it every week. It trends every week. And anytime people call the Mel Plummer out for, you know, the fuck shit and, you know, holding the black community back and all this trash and, oh, my God, this is trash television. He is such a narcissist that he automatically deflects from everything. It's always, oh, well, but look at you. Oh, my God, but look at you. Okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but look what they're doing. But look what the white people are doing. It's just always deflection. He never really takes any kind of building and he always deflects from it. And it's sad because that's what usually narcissistic people do. Narcissistic people usually see what you say and they find somebody to take it and then throw it right back at you because they want to refrain themselves from self-accountability because they can't stand people seeing them in a bad light they can't stand being the bad person in someone's story but it's true it's trash television you created trash television you're part of trash television and it's okay you better own it bitch because that's some shit that you created i mean look at jerry springer jerry springer said many many years ago even back in the day when he created the you know when he was you know doing the whole Jerry Springer show, producing it, being the host for it and everything, Jerry Springer made it very clear that he's not going to refrain from accountability at all. He knows that it's trash television. He even made it clear that he don't mind if he goes to hell because he knows he created trash television. Even he was online, and they just want to watch the Jerry Springer show. Look, my show is stupid. Let's just, <laughs> it's stupid. But it's fun to do. I enjoy it. People obviously like it, otherwise they wouldn't Why watch do you it. think it's stupid? Well, because it has no redeeming social value. It's, a, it's, it's an, an hour of escapism. But at least our show is reality. Own it. Jerry Spring was able to own that shit straight up and say, yeah, it's trash. Yeah, it's low energy, but I got paid for a job and it's fun to do and it is what it is and people watch it and tune into it and I'm still making money. So what's up? Same thing what I do. People can look at me and be like, oh my God, but you're always about tea, trauma, gossip. And yes, you damn fucking right, bitch. A lot of the shit I do, bitch, is fucking drama, gossip, and tea. Who's going to fucking check me? No one. So yes, I can own that shit and admit that there's some stuff on my channel that's definitely negative. But I also try to add a nice little balance to it and add meaningful conversations, meaningful dialogue, good recaps, good quality conversation podcasting and then incorporate some things going on in my life so i try to sometimes mix it up and sometimes yes people could look at the things on my channel and assume that it's all negative and i don't have a problem with that at all because guess what i enjoy doing commentary and pop culture and shit involving that and that's just what it is same thing with people who go around saying yeah i make only fans content but i'm not a porn star and then there's some who are willing to admit that they are sex workers and they are porn stars because that's what you are if you make only fans content and you make content for people who you know, jerk off or masturbate, you are a porn star. Your people who make OnlyFans content will be so quick to be like, oh, we're not porn stars. I'm not a porn star. I don't do. You are a porn star, bitch, but you are. You literally make content that's explicit and X rated and pornographic and you post it to an audience and you get followers and make money off of it. And it is extreme fighting and violence that surpasses what we see on normal cable. And it seems to be that that is a large part of your success. That's low hanging fruit, in my opinion. He's worked in television for years. He's worked with the Monique show, talk shows. He's worked as a producer, pitching TV shows, getting budgets for TV shows. He's been in this industry. He's not new to this, he's true to this. But the issue is he's constantly being limited and dismissed and he hates it. So he's trying to move in a different direction. And when he announced before Thanksgiving that he was gonna move in a direction of scripted television, original series, what Netflix is doing, what Hulu is doing, 
automatically he got an amazing response and now there's so many people reaching out there's so many investors trying to get involved then nick cannon he recently got his own show on zeus network called bad versus wild where now they're going to be doing game shows that's so random so eventually natalie with her little stink attitude is eventually going to be flicked off to the side thrown away and it's going to be like yes thank you for your business get out of here chin get your ass out of here thank you for giving us what you gave us thank you for the ratings thank you for doing what you did but you can leave now there's a reason why Krishan, for example, when she's on the show, she refused to show up to the reunion. Krishan Rock requested Zeus Network recently to give her $200,000 or else she wasn't going to do the reunion. And of course, Zeus Network paid her ass dust and kept it moving, which is unfortunate because she's a big reason why a lot of people tuned into Baddies because as she was growing into her potential, Baddies was growing. It was rapidly growing for her fighting and for her messy issues with Blueface. Hey. Plus, everything that's tied in, like, what? Y'all know what y'all about to pay me for? A shit show, nigga, so I need my motherfucking money. She's pressed because Zeus Network sees her as, bitch, you're disposable, fuck you, because Krishan Rock is a liability. Why are they gonna pay you to act rat shit when they have a whole bunch of more shit in the works? Why give you 200K when they're not even trying to make the whole reality TV situation their bread and butter anymore? That show Bad Boys Club that Natalie produced, it failed. That show Crazy in Love, Krishan Rock and Blueface are constantly breaking up and having issues. That shit's a wrap. Blueface had his own show coming out, but of course, Blueface is in jail right now, so he can't even fulfill what he thought he was going to be able to do. So it's little stuff like that that shows you that Natalie Nunn eventually is going to be out of here when it comes to Zeus Network and this whole producer bag. And that's what Natalie's intimidated by. Natalie hates the fact that she's probably going to have to get her ass back on her back and get her ass back on them private jets and start you know, doing a little something strange for some change in order to keep herself afloat. She's been accustomed to a certain lifestyle, and she feels as though that Zeus eventually going to take that away from her. That's why when Zeus talks about all these changes, she's irritated and she's intimidated. She's going to get replaced by some younger, prettier girl. She's going to get replaced by some younger, fresher content. And all Lamel Plummer is doing is he's waiting for an opportunity to get rid of her ass. He's waiting for an opportunity to literally throw her ass away. And honestly, I feel like the Caribbean season is going to cause a lot of ruckus. And the reason I say it's going to cause ruckus is because, let's be real for a second, the Caribbean do not fucking play when it comes to people repping their country. If you bring your fuck shit to the Caribbean, they are not going to fuck with you at all. So honestly, realistically, Lamel Plummer doesn't like being a laughing stock. He's going to move to a different niche. And this show will literally fade into obscurity and we'll never hear about it ever again. And the Zeus Network will continue to honestly elevate and grow because they were able to use these women and use a menstrual show. Like do what Tyler Perry did, basically. Use a whole menstrual show in order to catapult themselves and then eventually toss them away and then use that platform that was given to them to promote the real shit. So that's all I got to say on that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video breakdown and I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from when I say baddies is coming to an end and it's going to end very, very soon and sooner than we all think. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye and now you know we'll have to go right back on her back and start popping her poom poom on Reddit again. But that was that for this video. Please sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about my overall thoughts and yeah, that's that. Trace out this bitch. Twin, have you been? Nobody knows me. No, like you do, and nobody gon' love me quite like you. Can't even deny it. Every time I try it, one look in my eyes, you know I'm lying, lying. Body to body, skin to skin. I never heard her, her pretend. Nobody knows me like you love me. Nobody knows me like you love me. That's all you get for free. Make sure to join my Patreon, stream my podcast, and like this video for the algorithm. Thanks.